Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome back to the Hilltop Workshop. On the bench in front of me today, nothing to fix, just a bit of show and tell. Uh, these two things you may or may not have seen around the place before. First of all, two things they are not. They are not turkey basters, and they are definitely not karaoke microphones to be pulled off the top of your friend's speakers at 1.30 in the morning after you've had maybe one or two many uh, red cordials. What they are, in fact, is uh, B and W, Bowers and Wilkins, uh, Nautilus tweeters. Uh, a couple of different variations, essentially the same unit. The unit up the top here uh, has a glossy black anthracite finish on it, uh, more common amongst some of the signature style speakers, so uh, your signature 805s. Um, I believe there was probably a couple of other models that had them, but yeah, you're going to see them uh, less common. Uh, less, less common? you're going to see fewer of those around than you would these. While it's there though, I'll point out the difference in the fixing methods. This one up the top here was quite often the subject of the 1.30 a.m. red cordial induced party foul. So what would essentially happen is people that were a bit too curious would grab this off the top of the speaker and think that it was a microphone or something that wasn't fixed to the speaker as tightly as it actually was and even though there was initial resistance people would persist and reef this thing clean off snapping the, the points of attachment uh, more common with the plastic attachment than it is with the the threaded metal post but both of them happen trust me i'm going to move this one out of the way and have a bit of a look at this one so brief rundown of these tweeters they were brought out after the launch of the Nautilus, uh, BMW's Nautilus loudspeaker, which is the big sort of curly shell thing that you may or may not have seen. Big four-way thing uh, needed, you know, to run them properly, you were looking at 240, uh, sorry, 2400 watts per channel. So um, expensive operation. But what they did was brought that technology to the masses in the form of this tweeter, uh, starting with the Nautilus 800 series loudspeakers, came out about 15, 20 years ago. Very, very popular, very, very nicely made speaker. So looking at this one, it's aluminium dome tweeter. They do now do a diamond tweeter. If I was doing that with a diamond tweeter, it probably would be in about a million pieces by now. Very brittle, but very, very nice. Plastic housing. We've got sorbothane isolation between this, the tweeter on top, and then the cabinetry that this mounts on top of. Uh, sorbothane's awesome stuff. Um, one of the best impact absorbing substances known to man. Uh, so very, very good wear. Uh, isolation is needed uh, so they put that in there um, and that was basically just to keep this attached a bit separate from the cabinetry I'm going to open it up now now this tweeter is dead so if you see me mishandling it um, fear not it's not going to be the end of the world I've already got the wires detached um, that nut on the back there is basically just that it's just a bit of aluminium tube that's machined up got a thread cut in the end and that's what holds the assembly all together and pull it out of its housing. Housing's hollow, uh, nothing to look at in there. But this is what all the hoopla is about. So this is your Nautilus tube here. Um, and uh, for all intents and purposes, it does a very, very good job of what it is designed to do. So now the theory that they were working on was that you only want to hear sound that comes off the front of the driver, which of course is right. Um, otherwise you're gonna get things out of phase and. Um, you're going to lose the, the accuracy in the, the layout of your sound stage. Um, so what they wanted to do, they thought the ultimate to do would be to eliminate any standing waves or any uh, audio waves coming from the rear of the driver and take them away to an area where they could no longer be heard. Uh, so they developed this tapered tube. Uh, now the tapered tube, there's really nothing too special about it other than it is made out of a rather acoustically dead material and inside that um, we've got some cotton wadding well, you know, a synthetic type of cotton wadding uh, just to fill it and, and dampen the insides of it and stop anything from ringing and then on the front of that we have our tweeter attached now what makes this tweeter different to most others so there's going to be some erratic editing throughout this because it's very windy outside and it's also because um, it's a nice day today there's a fair bit of traffic going up and down to the um, to the lookout so but what makes this different to most other tweeters is that if we look through the back there, what you're actually looking through in that, looking at in that center hole is the rear of the, the, the driver itself. It's the rear of the aluminium dome. You wouldn't normally see that on uh, most tweeters. 
and why that's hollow there is of course so the sound from the back of the driver can transfer through that hole and then down into this tube so it is it is a functional design it's not just um, you know to make it look pretty and, and for sales and marketing although you know it would be fair to say that there is a fair bit of that involved in this too so I'm going to take this apart there's just three screws that hold the dome onto the magnet and once they're out well, these will separate relatively easily and there we have it and that's the guts of a Bowers and Wilkins Nautilus tweeter now, this model probably you know we're looking at 10 15 years old but um, regardless this is uh, the technology that it's all built on so a 25 millimeter voice coil the voice coil this is open circuit um, uh, it's ferrofluid cooled I dare say if I run my finger around there I'm gonna get a bit of the ferrofluid on me probably not the best stuff to get on me but anyway there we go the suspension wise there's nothing that you're gonna write a letter home about it's uh, just a nice you know, uh, compliant butyl rubber suspension one of the interesting things that I found about these when I first opened them up was I looked at this o-ring this hexagonal o-ring and thought well why is that there and then when you have a look here you can see that it actually makes up with the flange uh, on the tweeter and virtually seals everything inside the suspension and everything inside this section of the magnet and then as a result everything that goes onto the back of this and all of the air that is uh, then in the Nautilus tube basically creates a sealed enclosure for the tweeter itself so I think that's probably one thing that I've never seen on another tweeter before is actually you know we've never seen any Nautilus style designs previously but actually going to the lengths of creating a sealed enclosure so that not only do we aim to just fire whatever comes off the back of this driver down into this tube but we also make it impossible virtually impossible for any of the audio to leak out around this housing here so minimizes the chance of this section radiating and then um, yeah it basically creates a sealed unit all the way down into the Nautilus tube so that was something that I was surprised but not surprised to see you know um, quite a bit of thought went into the design of this so I'm just going to put it back together now um, I've had a lot of these apart the most common failures that I've seen um, have been either yeah the catastrophic um, structural failure that is induced when someone tries to get their karaoke on or in the case of this one it's a fried voice coil which is uh, normally the result of somebody using subpar amplification and pushing the speaker harder than it's supposed to go the amplifier goes into DC starts to clip out and fries the coil so there we have it a very very simple construction really um, and very very popular I mean they've sold Oh God, hundreds of thousands of pairs of these things notice also when it goes back together that nut on the back there goes to a dead stop so the preload of that sorbethane isolation ring there um, is set to however they want it to be from the factory so it doesn't bind down tight against the housing um, it's sitting there floating but, um, yeah I hope you found this interesting um, like I said, it's just a bit of show and tell. Um, occasionally you get questions about these things and um, anyone in the, in the future I'll be able to point to this video and I see this thing being torn down. There could be countless other versions of this video that other people have done over the years, but this is my little contribution and I, I hope you found it interesting. Um, usual thing with YouTube, like, share, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. If you've got any comments or questions, let me, down, uh, let me know down in the uh, comments section below. Uh, in the meantime, I am going to move on to whatever's next to come across the bench and uh, hopefully it'll be something that I can um, share a bit of knowledge and a bit of insight to as well. So until then, thanks for watching. See you next time.